Hey y'all, it's Rolo coming at you from Jenton Den. Today we're going to talk about fashion and ads. I have Amanda Hug, Kiss, and her friend Tracy. How you doing, girls? Good. Rad. We're doing rad. Whoa. Oh oh totally rad. Um, loving it. So the 80s, there was a lot of fun stuff I saw growing up. What are some of the fun things you saw uh, when you were growing up? Or what did you wear? So um, is it appropriate to ask you what year you were born? So we kind of know what part oh, of the no, was born, no, no, I was born in mid-70s for sure. So like. Okay, us too. Um, so the early 80s were like whatever our parents were dressing us in, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, who wore tough jeans? Well, uh, in, the early, the in the early 80s, my mom made all of my clothes because oh my God. They, they were all patterns and they matched. Um, um, McCall? Wasn't McCall, that the, yes. the pattern? Yeah. McCall, yeah. Yes. McCall, the patterns? The Yes. Yeah. 100%. And I then, know because my mom used to sew. <laughs> she, I thought if I was able to go, instead of picking out outfits, I was able to pick out patterns that was my early 80s. Oh, uh, that's kind of dope, though. I bet she has shoulder pads. <laughs> I didn't have shoulder pads until like later 80s, once I started going shopping and picking out my clothes. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Although you could always double them as, uh, I use them to uh, pad your bra if you need to, I heard. Always. Or yeah, her stories. So, um, so um, one oh, thing yes. that that I got to do in the '80s, and I felt super cool, was that um, someone that I knew that uh, sewed clothes also made me a dress that matched my Cabbage Patch Dolls dress. Oh, and let me tell you something. Oh, that's what you want to showstopper, me. Yes. right there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, talk about matching. That's like twinsy stuff. It's actually next level. To yeah. match with your cabbage patch doll in the eighties, it was. And then with the pictures, if you had, if you were able to get oh, pictures, I we got pictures over the sure. top. Oh my god! Um, did you paste them on your trapper keeper? <laughs> so, so you're you're moving closer to the nineties for us. Um, okay. but yes, I mean, well, no, I mean, we didn't match our clothes with the trapper keepers, but we had. You know, we definitely could change out the trapper keepers to match what we were wearing that day. Well, my trapper keeper was an by far an ocean theme because I, at the time, was growing up in the at, in Oceanside. So I had a whale for one. I had two trapper keepers. Sweet. And, uh, and then I also had my peachy folders. Oh, so yeah. I was going to say uh, in the eighties, I I had. A lot of peachy folders, peachy like just folders a ton. For every subject. I had a yellow one. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. the one. Yeah, I had a whole bunch of those. Um, I like the trapper keepers because they had the fun designs and all those pockets. And the Velcro, and you could just. Oh, man, I, love I actually love the sound of Velcro propping. I know that's I a have... weird thing to say. Yeah, <laughs> right. The, yes. I have the trapper keeper yeah. with the um, hot air balloons on it. Ooh, that was Classic. a good one. That yeah. was Classic. a good one. Yes. Hot air balloons. I didn't have I didn't have that one, but that, that yeah. was a good choice. Good choice. What about pro wings and the Velcro? Did anybody have those in their outfits? Uh -huh. Okay. Because... So, so the eighties were a weird time. Okay. It's not like today, but in the eighties, like where I was. People were made fun of if you wore pro wings. Yeah, <laughs> so, of course. Yeah. So I don't know if that was like you, like that for you where you were at, but where I was at, if you wore pro wings, yes, you were, you were poor. Are you trying to make, so so you're making you're basically calling me poor because I had <laughs> my I I wore pro wings. They were poor. Okay, yeah. no, pro but look. But look, you got to understand, though, 
girls are held to a different standard than for girls. sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> girls can wear pink pro wings and it's they're like they're dope. They were pink. They yeah. were pink and yeah. white. You can you can do it. But okay, I should wear pro wings. You're <laughs> gonna get made fun of, bullied all day, all night until you got a different pair of shoes. Um, I mean, if we can start with shoes, I, I have a couple more kinds of shoes from the 80s that I'll never forget. I mean, do you, did you have jellies, Rolo, or no? Okay, so jellies were for girls. Jellies, okay. yeah, jellies, say jellies I, were a girl. Yeah, yeah. Jellies were for girls. Uh, go ahead. Do we, I mean, do we have a picture of jellies anywhere? We could probably throw one up, right? I'll throw it in later. So, yeah. So jellies are, jellies were by far... I mean, if if we now in 2000 and what are we 23 think about the mm. the lack of support and comfort that jellies offered and to filth girls and stink and but we had to wear them to be cool, right? Yeah, my cousins wore jellies, and I have a whole bunch of girl cousins, and they wore all different kinds of jellies, and I did notice the smell. <laughs> they yeah. had a particular smell, actually. Yeah. So. I mean, they mass produce those things in some small factory somewhere. Ugh. Okay. Did yeah. you get matching slap bracelets? Slap bracelets? You didn't have those where you were at? They were so like those are friendship, friendship, but not slap. The slap okay. bracelets have come back. I don't know if you know yeah. that. Yeah. Have they? Oh yeah. yes, my kids. Yeah. I just know my friends into slap bracelets. Yeah, I know my my friends. Uh, the girls, the guys didn't really have those. I know they would have that, and they would freaking like hurt themselves because they had like metal inside it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, sometimes it, it would cut their forearms. It's like a tape measure. It's an old tape measure. Is that what yeah. it is? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. No wonder. Yeah. No. I mean, like. I definitely would be a concerned parent if I saw a kid with all these marks on their forearms. Um, that's what I remember about uh, the eighties. And like, I remember the slab braces and jellies. I didn't know if that was universal um, for, sure. for guys, for shoes. We had shell tops from Adidas. Oh, oh yes, yes, you did. Run DMC. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. that's Beastie exactly Boys. Right. You had to. These guys had those, and so I rocked. I rocked those hard, and I would wear them every day um, until I grew out of them. And then I would ask for more, and my mom wouldn't get them for me. Hmm. Black and white only, or did you have like? More? I had I had a blue. I think I had blue stripes. Oh. Um, I had the whole blue Adidas jumpsuit. Right, it was like a tracksuit. Right, it was oh, a tracksuit. Yeah. yeah, with my white. And uh, blue shell tops. Oh, yeah. I was, I was, fine. Oh. I, thought, I thought it was fine. It was... Totally rad. So, totally rad. Do you remember the shoes that were uh, late 80s that we called flojos? Those are no, big. no, they're not. They, I saw them they? literally no on my feed. On yes, yes, flojos. Okay. Flo explain, to, explain to those like myself what a flojo is. Okay, so they were a sandal that were, um, unisex well i mean they made them in girl colors and then they made them in unisex colors and then they made them for men and they were they were rubber and they crossed and then went around your ankle and you bought them at surf shops and stuff like that yeah oh so you'd have a whole bunch of those over by oceanside i guess well i lived in bakersfield oh yeah i, I lived in oceanside that's where i grew up yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I mentioned, actually. Yeah. So yeah, well, we can't okay, you can't see that. No, but yes, can. they are total. They're they're surfer, but I never wore them because my feet <laughs> would slip out of them. If your feet oh, would sweat, and my feet did, that's why the <laughs> the jellies. My feet were able to stay stay in. in. Flojos, no. Flojos were huge here. I did like jellies, though. I did like looking at them. Um, my cousins wore. And you, I don't know if you did too. They wore leg warmers. Oh, so many leg warmers. <laughs> like leg warmers. If, if you had leg warmers and you could wear them with your kids, 
Oh yeah. Keds. Switch your colors out. Did on you, your kids. Do, oh, do you know kids? Kids? Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Oh. Yeah. Keds. Keds. Your leg warmers. Oh my goodness. Or LA gear with your leg warmers. LA gear or those were the shit. Or yeah. sometimes yeah. Reebok. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. The white Reeboks those, were as long as you had your leg warmers and they mm -hmm. would have to be on yeah. point with the colors. Sometimes you could double layer them. Good stuff. I had Reeboks. Yeah, I had Reeboks and I had LA gear for that short time they were popular. Um, mine were brown and they were suede. Wow. Yeah, yeah I bought I bought suede Fancy. on mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had I saved up a lot of lunch money for that for that. So I mean like it didn't my parents didn't get me um, they would add if they could have, but you know, I had to try to save up to try to get stuff I wanted. Um, and I would always spend my money on toys, records, and shoes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that was the deal. Um, cassette tapes because yep. it's too expensive. Columbia House. <laughs> you yeah. signed up for that? Did you really? Oh, yeah. For one dollar, you could get 24 plus one. And then just quit <laughs> but quit responding to their mail. Yeah, I re ruined my credit record at a young age. Uh oh. So yeah, they went after your credit. So by the time I was 15, I had a broken credit record from Columbia House. <laughs> from Columbia House. <laughs> so when you talked about leg warmers, um, when something that happened when I was uh, young, like so maybe like between four and seven or eight, my mom, her and her friends would um um come over to my my house and they would wear workout like leotards tights leg warmers and the late and the leotards that were like really high cut and they would just come oh over like that God. like it was normal okay like this is like hi I we're remember. here and then they'd be like okay kids get outside and we'd have to go outside for the three hours or whatever it was that they were going to work out. And they would do jazzercise <gasps> in Jazz. the living room with their outfits on. Oh, my and God. I just remember looking in the window and being like, someday I'm going to wear that. <laughs> I'm going to get one of those. I am. Did was, they work out I with that? I did look outfit? up to the whole jazzercise leotard outfit. It was pretty dope. It was, and with their headband, just headbands, going. sweatbands. Oh yeah, man. Yes, the sweatbands. Oh, yeah. I thought but I was cool with sweatbands. I thought I was the shit. Like I thought I was like an like athlete the, or something. Yeah, I felt you were like an do athlete. Something. If you put it on, you were definitely going to do something that they, they, whether you did or not, but you just felt like you were. When I had him on, I felt like a San Francisco 49er. Oh. That's, what <laughs> That's what I felt like when I had him on. Um, what I remember from going to the park um, in the 80s, guys would wear 80s shorts, and they were short. <laughs> they were, like, really short and tight. And they would wear, like, put, like, tennis balls in their pocket. <laughs> That's like stupid, right? Okay, wait. Like, so they were like, they'd be like a solid color with the two white stripes down the side. Yeah, and like that's white exactly trim. right. Yes. I I didn't really understand what that tennis ball things was exactly for until I was older. <laughs> yeah. I, then I knew. Sure. Then I was like, huh? Like, what is that about? Right. Um, yeah. yeah. I never okay. So um, the. The 80s did a big well, I think Madonna brought in lace, you know, they became kind oh, of cool. Yeah. Um, like a version mm -hmm. she in that one. No. There was some lace over some of the oh, Papa yeah. Don't Preach. Is that the one she had lace? I don't remember which is the one she had lace in. Oh, um, holiday. <clears throat> yes, holiday for sure. Holiday. For sure. Holiday. Was that the one? Yeah, she had lace. Mm -hmm. I remember she had a she had one of those things that they called scrunchies. They still have them, though. Yeah. Um, Material Girl was the one that was in the pink dress with the 
the gloves and the guys in the background, like Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. Is that the one? I remember that. That's why I remember the gloves. Because they, it wasn't just limited to lace, but um, what I mean to say uh, gloves, they had fingerless gloves going on in the 80s too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think that was the Papa Don't. Well, Papa Don't Preach, that was late 80s, wasn't it? When she had the fingerless gloves. Yeah. Hats, I remember the guys warm all the time. Uh, these dudes would wear like these uh, leather ones. And I always thought they got it from Billy Idol. Because I know Billy Idol used to wear them. So I always thought everyone tried to look like Billy Idol. That was my... Really? Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, Billy Idol, he was the guy that sang Eyes Without a Face. Yes. I think. He sang yeah. a lot of songs. You know what I remember about yeah. him was the net tank tops. Oh, yeah. And the thing yeah, with the right. gloves. Yes. Yeah. And they went with the, Did people wear that where you were at? Because I, I saw that a lot in the city. Not here too often. <laughs> okay. That was, yeah, that was kind of transition. Like in, in Bake, in Cal or in Oceanside, they wore that all the time. But when I moved up to Bakersfield, they cowboy stuff it cowboy was very clothes. conservative i got made fun of a lot of when i moved up here because i used to wear uggs when i lived in oceanside uggs have been huge for a very long time and okay. when i came up here they made fun of me because i had them on but i i didn't know any different and now they're huge and make a ton of money but back then it wasn't a huge name brand anywhere other than the beach so okay. I could see that. I could see that. Like, that's the only place I've seen them. So, I mean, it wasn't like that common where I was at. So, but I did know they existed. Um, we're talking about 80s. Um, let me see what I wore. Um, going to tops. I used to wear puffy vests like in <laughs> the future. Well, I, yeah, because Back to the Future was huge, right? Yes. At yeah. that time. And so everybody wanted to look like Michael J. Fox. I did. I had, I have it a bunch of vests. I, in hindsight, that was two bendy vests that I had. Sometimes I probably felt like Aladdin with all those vests. <laughs> did you skateboard? Um, no, I never had any athletic ability to roller skate or skateboard but roller skates were huge in san francisco everywhere, uh, everywhere. i was a roller skate I, listen <laughs> i thought i was gonna grow up and be a roller skater that's what i thought that's what you're like gonna do yeah i spent, a, I spent is that what a you lot did? of time doing that. oh i spent lots of time roller skating probably until i was a you know at the end of middle school but um, yeah, that was. Uh, Are you good? Was... Yeah, a little I, bit. She, I, I, I've seen her trophies. She's <laughs> no trophies. <laughs> I mean, I did some roller skating. She shade, has but... one skate that's like a gold skate. <laughs> no, I don't. And she she oh. was so famous that somebody stole one of her skates. <laughs> oh damn! And it, yeah, probably up yeah. for so auction that other skate. piece. Yeah, that's crazy. Hey, Rolo, did you ever used to peg your pants? Is peg when like they like they they tapered it, right? Fold it, yes. yeah. Fold it over, roll okay. it up. Yes. Um, late eighties, I believe. Yeah, I could be wrong, but I think it was the late eighties. It was. Um, I was in middle school. Yeah, and that was like like end of elementary, beginning of middle school, if I remember right. Yeah, we did that. We did that. Um, our friends would like. Like we talked to each other and be like, "Hey, can you do this for me? How'd you do that?" You know, so like, right? The I wasn't good at better. it. I wasn't good at it. <laughs> and um, one of our one of our homies would bring like bobby pins, right? Yeah. And like we would do it Safety in a locker pins. room. Yeah, yeah, those, Safety those. Pins. Yeah, we would do it in a locker room and be like, "Dude, this is how you do it." And we like thought we were hella fresh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for sure. Um, yeah. We also wore bucket hats with those. Bucket hats. Yeah. 
Yeah, we wore bucket hats well, with those. Yeah, for sure. Because again, yeah. like Run DMC and yeah. Beastie, Beastie Boys, in like they brought the that 80s. in, right? Yeah. yeah. In the eighties, the bucket hats were like Kangles, but in the nineties, we're not there yet. But in the nineties, they had the the other type of bucket hats um, that they wore all the time. Um, but I wore those and this is kind of embarrassing, <laughs> but it is what it is. I wore zipper jackets like Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I thought I was bad. I'm bad. You know it. Literally with the, Come on. did you, you had red? Did you have a red one? I did. I had a red okay. one. Well, I mean, hey, yeah, that's on it. I think, though, honestly, so many people wanted them and they couldn't have them. So for you to say that you actually were able to wear one, like kudos to you because people, right? I mean, oh, yeah, they they wanted that shit for sure. Okay, but mine wasn't leather. <laughs> It no, it was pleather. It was pleather. No, it was cloth. It wasn't even pleather. It was cloth. Did your grandma make it for oh, you? It was cloth. It was it was cloth? Yeah, it was red. And I wore it every day. So much so that one day when I got home, I used to go to Catholic school, okay? When I got home from Catholic school, my mom... She de-stitched the entire jacket <laughs> in pieces because she got tired of me wearing it every day. Oh, no. I'm peace, mad at her. Rest I'm in peace. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, she told that jacket to beat it. I understand. <laughs> but um, psh. Ooh. I mean, we're not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we Sorry. can't leave the AIDS without talking about acid wash, right? Acid wash jeans. Ooh. Oh, jeans, jackets, all of it. All of it. Um, had to have it. I never had one for myself, but my brother. He had a whole bunch of acid wash stuff. You never had um, any item of clothing that was acid I, I may have had one pair of pants. I think they were blue. Um, but my brother, I know he had he, he had it for sure. Yeah, definitely. Acid was one of those things I would rather forget about. It's coming back. Yeah, so it is. Watch I got out. mine from really? Noah's Outpost with a matching fanny pack. Mm, fanny pack. Yes. Fanny packs and acid wash were huge right and then. And I, let me tell you, I sh walked through that school like I was the shit. <laughs> with your, with your with acid wash me. jeans in a fanny pack? Yeah, because my, my acid wash jeans were pegged. I had my high top Reeboks on with two different color socks. <laughs> I, had, oh. I had my were they acid neon? wash peg jeans on. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. because they had to match my neon rolled up shirt neon it was neon yellowish green yes and my side ponytail boom mic drop i walked in I the school. like i owned it it was the best no, you were the, you were the freshest at that school you were the prize in town even if i could have learned how to break dance back then i would have owned the school but do you remember the 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 very bright like we call it cl color blocking now, but it's like the big chunks of color, but there's a, you know, bunch of different ones. And it was like the Columbia jackets and they were like windbreakers, pink, blue, purple. So here's the thing I'll admit. Oh. I'm a windbreaker guy. Oh, okay. And I've always been a windbreaker guy since the 90s. Don't hate that. So I mean, no, since the 80s. And I had those wild colors. <laughs> I had those. Not they many. Were great. But I'm still a windbreaker guy. Like I've never deviated. I've stayed true to the following. I don't know if there's a cult out there. If there's a cult out there, let me know. 
and I'll join that uh, Davidian compound. Well, my 23-year-old has one, and he rocks it sometimes. Windbreakers are awesome, awesome. It, because it, they literally will break that wind. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I wore parachute pants. Well, and you should have. Oh, yes. Z Cavaricci? Or was was that the... Z Cavaricci? Yeah. I'm going to say early 90s. Okay. Was, was, we, we, Z Cavaricci was definitely 90s. I was when I'm never able to wear those. My... No, no, my mom wouldn't let me. Those, those were hammer came out during hammer, hammer pants. time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I, I wore hammer pants in the late eighties. Um, not not hammer pants. Yeah, not. Uh, I did wear hammer pants. But we'll get to that in a minute. Um, parachute pants. I did wear parachute those pants. in the late eighties. Um, and I wore one more thing that I remember, in regards to pants in the eighties. And is this the reason why I don't have any children? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Oh no. Were they like the tight, like super tight, tight tights? I wore tight. Leather. No, not leather. I wore tight buttonfly 501 jeans. Yes. Now that's a baker's. That, that was be, a Baker's. You thing. know why that was uh, like Back to the Future because yes. isn't that what Marty McFly wore, right? Yeah, like I suppose so. Daughter? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, all the buttons that buttoned up, yeah. like so many of them, because that was the whole thing when he went back, and they were like, "What are those button fly?" Remember yes, when he went back? Yes. That's it, because they button fly was cool shit in the eighties. It was. And you did it. Huh? You, did it. Wow. you had the button fly, huh? I mean, I didn't know that. That's the reason I would not be able to breed in my later <laughs> years. Or have children. You know, so. Oh, <laughs> He's in breed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Clearly. That's my, that's my social justice call. I can't breed. That's uh, yeah. definitely me. Um, I wore those to death until they had holes in them and I outgrew them. I just, I just. Man, I wore those all the time, but they were so tight. They were so freaking tight. And I couldn't pee because they were hard to debutton. Yeah. So since he's not here, he doesn't get to say, I'm going to go ahead and say Shirk wore those too. He wore the tightest ones. Oh, for and sure. And he probably everybody. wore them with the um, net tank top from Billy, you know, Billy Idol net tank top with nothing under. Nothing Just under. Like a, yes. I agree. And I agree. I think he looks like the type. Like a neon, yeah. neon net tank top. Yeah, neon net yes. tank top. Yes. Oh, and yeah, I'm gonna great. say, I'm gonna say he wore some uh, Reeboks. Boot. I'm white. gonna say Reeboks. Okay. White Reeboks. We'll All, everybody wore them. Everybody wore the we'll white. Don't white. Say like Velcro cause... high top. Yeah. I know he had as an accent piece to his outfit. He had a handkerchief. Around his neck, sideways, and it was neon. <laughs> For, sure. For sure. For sure. That's absolutely. So don't sell them and short. An earring on his right um, side. Yes. Before we leave the 80s, I want you to know that some of the things that I saw as a kid and that I owned was a Walkman <sighs> to go with my outfit. Right. I, I was the like the dopest guy, and I had to have that on my on my side so i looked cool and everybody needed to know that i had my walkman and i was the coolest dude ever except it wasn't like a real walkman because i got it in chinatown <laughs> so like it was like a wong man you know so but still nobody knew nobody knew you no know, you know you were rocking your beats hey so here's the crazy thing about walkmans they took batteries Remember, there was no charging that. No. You yeah. had to have I mean, batteries. Rechargeable many... existed, but nobody had them. Right. Mm -mm. So how many people walked around with, like, the Walkman that wasn't, the batteries were dead, <laughs> you know? But you still took you it still... out because, like, you couldn't. it was part mm -hmm. of your outfit. Yeah. Right? That's You're talking to me. That's me. Yeah. That's not. <laughs> you're all, I still do it. I still do it. I should. You know what? 
I'm going to buy one. I'm going to buy one on eBay and I'm just going to bring it back. Bring it back. Yeah. Yes. I would. Did you guys have people walk around with boom boxes? Oh, yeah. Uh, For sure. Like on their shoulder, loud as they could, walking down the beach in their skimpy shorts. For sure. Yeah. We had that all over here. We had this guy named Daryl. Daryl, yes, Daryl. Daryl was his name. He was muscular, like Mr. T. And um, he would carry the largest boombox you've ever seen. Um, it might be like half, maybe half the length of a car. He was just, and because he was muscular, only he could carry it, you know? <laughs> and it had enough D batteries to power a city so how funny that like it was just acceptable you're just like so you all get to listen to what i like like yeah, no matter I what did. It. how was it you either hated it or you didn't and why did they have to be so close to your head yeah everyone walked around they used to have it on their head on their shoulder right it's, but like so like well, when did, they when did, when did we like... decide that like a really loud speaker shouldn't be rested up against the side of your face. <laughs> My friend, his name was Mako. I think he brought a boom box and we would all take the bus to school and he would play. Um, Luke, they were known as the, the head guy was known as Luke Skywalker. Oh, run. Uh, uh, Hold on. Two Live Crew. Yeah. Two Live Crew. Two Live Crew. And Two Live Crew played not suitable for anywhere. Ever. Not even not even suitable for the adults you hung out with. No, no, not suitable for anybody. What? What are we and he would play two live crew in the (laughs) bus? And once we got kicked out of the bus and we had to walk home. Um because we were going to let him be like the only one to get kicked out, you know? Yeah. So like he was yeah. going to go, we were going to, you know, walk with, we got him in trouble basically too. Yeah. Cause we were part of it. We were all in it. So yeah. Walk home. Did you guys yeah. have to take the bus to, uh, to school? I took the bus to school. Yes. And I had a bus driver that only had these fingers <laughs> The shocker thing. The shocker, because wow. she used to be a she was a skater, and she had a ring on this finger. And when she was doing some sort of trick flip, she got her truck stuck in it, stuck in it, ripped her finger off. So she was the coolest bus driver ever. She didn't skate much after that, though. Mm. But she spent a lot of time in the bedroom. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, that's a cool skater trick, though. <laughs> actually yeah i mean she, she didn't do it much after that they, I used to they renamed tony it hawk. the shocker in the it 90s i worked tony hawk because i love these video games but anyways I digress. tony hawk i mean you can't even talk about the 80s and 90s without tony hawk like, yeah he was the one pioneer more thing, one more thing about the 80s that actually went into the 90s that i saw started personally in the 80s was a valley girl accent oh my god are you serious that's so cool that's i love I can't it, do it. <laughs> you got it you got I, I can't do it obviously i can't do it listen there the valley girl came alongside like a a guy one too and so i felt like we kind of ran down the middle like like i didn't want to be a valley girl so but i would still talk like the guys at the time would be like Dude, are you I serious? Say dude all the time. Yeah, <laughs> and if you didn't notice, it, yeah, from growing like from moving from the beach to Bakersfield, every I didn't realize how conservative the town was. So everybody here kind of always talked to when they found out I came from the beach. They talked to me like I was a valley girl, and I, we didn't talk like that. But I was just like, okay, so. It's just like, oh my god, you're from the beach. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So you got it I down. Have it down pat. I have it down pat. 
Give me, give me a sentence. Oh, Amanda, have a conversation or Tracy, have a conversation with Amanda for a little bit in Valley Girl Talk. Just have a normal conversation. Or like you would in the you 80s. You want to go down and go catch a little brewski? Up your button around the corner. Oh my God. Don't even say that. It was right there last night. It was so funny. I can't even believe you're saying that. Rad. You know what, girls? Gag me with a spoon. Let's move on. <laughs> Gag me with a spoon. <laughs> oh my God. It's so oh. funny that you're saying that because when I wanted to gag, I was like, oh my God, he was so nasty gaggy. <laughs> As if. <laughs> oh God. That went into the 90s because of uh, that one movie uh, where she was a lawyer. That yeah, the Reese Witherspoon. Witherspoon um, Clueless. Yeah, Clueless. Clueless. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, I think that brought it back. Yeah. Um, and then Mean Girls did again. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you did really? Well, well Mean Girls. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Was, was there a Valley Girl accent in Mean Girls? I've seen it a few times. I don't remember. It, because it had the the popular ones at first they were. I thought the mom, when the mom's like, I'm the cool mom. Oh, was that like Spick Spickler's mom? Was she like no, that? No, that's a different, that's well, American Pie. I, no, I oh, oh, that movie, but no. I'm saying, wasn't she the same actress? No, no. She wasn't. Mm -mm. Okay. Do you girls vibe. wear pink on Wednesdays? We do. You know, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, that said, let's move to the 90s. 90s. So the 90s started off kind of funky. Because mm -hmm. like it was the over, there was like, um, oh, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, when you're drunk, and you wake up in the morning and you're hungover. There you go. There was some there was some 80s uh, hung hungover effect there. Um in the late 80s to early 90s, um Paula Abdul, I think, was around that time, and um Belle Biv DeVoe, I think they were started, they started to around just those early 80s, heavy D and guys, and they used to wear polka dot shirts. Polka dots were huge in the nine, the early early nineties. Polka dot I shirts, would. Janet Jackson. I feel like all of them at the time. And it was like it was like a men's. Oh, okay, I know. Rayon was the fabric yes. of the early nineties, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rayon. And yes. here's the thing about rayon: you couldn't wash it. No, right? it had to be no, like no, no, no. dry cleaned or something crazy. It had to be dry cleaned. Yeah, it was stupid. Like, what did we? What were we thinking? We can, you could go to like the family bargain center, and you could buy an outfit for like eight bucks, but sure. you you could only wear you could only wear it <laughs> until you could afford to dry clean because it was rayon and yes. it was the polka dot button up shirts that you would tuck into your. Z Cavaricis. Oh yeah, you're right. Um, on a related note, how long can you leave something without dry cleaning it before it gets ruined? Like, uh, like if if you spill something on it? Because I have um, bed covers that are dry clean only, and I haven't. It's been over a year for sure. I mean, <laughs> they didn't have a stain on it, but you know, it's just regular wear and tear. And yeah. I just say like bed covers. Um, yeah, just a, no, just like the top, just the, the comforter. Yeah, the, comforter. Yes, that's what the word. I'm duvet cover. Comforter. Okay. Just a comforter. Just. I mean, do you have I bed bugs just, or like, no? Weigh the cost of no. how much. New I've one never is. seen a bed bug in my life. Dry cleaning. Dry cleaning is so, not that bad. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say you can get that dry clean for you know twenty. Yeah. I need to. It's been over a year. Um, I just never went to the dry cleaner. <laughs> so uh, that's it. Going back to Rayon, my brother sported out some Rayon. I remember we had friends who had Rayon, and they were expensive too. It wasn't like just like the cheap ones, but they had some really expensive Rayon gear. <laughs> we had a dude named Gary. I remember he was like. He liked to push the envelope of fashion. And I think he was the first person I saw wear rayon. 
back in the day. Um, myself personally, I never had rayon, but what I did sport from the nineties was overalls. Oh, I, I'm <laughs> so glad you said that. That was that was on my overall. Overall, it overall, was it was a really good it was a really thing. good it was a really good outfit. So, did you wear the overalls with a bodysuit underneath? Because that's what we did. Yes. Whoa, for real? And no, how no, many but... did you have? A, you had one hanging down, right? You had, of course. Yeah. Okay. Of course, you, you needed to do that. There's no way for you sure. wouldn't be able to do you that. Had I mean, have it, room to move. Yeah. So one thing that happened during the '80s and bled into the '90s was mustard color mustard pants mustard shirts it was kind of like a hip-hop and r&b thing heavy d notably really oh, wore yeah. that color mm -hmm. is that something you guys wore down there or Never. when in your area mm -mm. okay no. here's one thing that's universal though and that came from the 80s was the hair poof the big hair with aqua in it for sure. And the, like the higher you could get it, the cooler you were. Okay. So there were three stations that you had to focus on before you left your house. And it was your bangs. Yes. Your wing hair. Wings. And your wing hair. Yeah. And you had to get them. Just. You had to have the pink and white can. Pink and of Aquanet. Of Aquanet. Because it was, yeah. and, and you had to have. The hair dryer and just so so be before you even could get near that you had to perm your hair yeah and then tease and it you perm your hair that's right oh tease you had it. to perm your hair tease it tease it tease it tease it tease it make it yeah i always wondered how the girls did that because they would do it every day every, every day. day and yeah, it would take day. so long <sighs> Just to ruin it, they would we would just literally put glue in our hair mm -hmm. and just stick it straight out and heat and heat. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What was step one again? So perm your hair. Perm your hair. Yeah. Then you would wash it, and then when you got out, you would put a mousse in it. Yes, mousse and, and you would and scrunch, scrunch it like this, <laughs> and then you would take it. Um, here with a rat tail comb will you diffuse it okay then you get yeah. your rat tail comb and then and you yeah. would just like like what is it? tease tease, yeah, tease is, is to so make you it get it as high as you could okay then you had to do are you ready and you, this was it. a big deal and then, then here you start with the spray. then no okay you sprayed it but you did you did your bangs curl them back but then a part of them you curled under Remember? Oh, just, yeah, this yeah, right here. But so, mine couldn't because I had a cowlick. So okay. I so you did was like a this. little curl under, but then the rest of it curled back. Yeah, and feathered so yeah. that it would all blend like you woke up that way. Yeah, you went through so all high. that in a daily. Day? Daily? daily, and the teenage boys go through it now. Yeah, well, I mean, really? these boys are kind of doing some stuff like that. that. They're not doing so much that hairspray, or... but they're like in the middle. The teenage boys, boys know all of them would be their hair that way, and I would always wonder how they did it. It was awful, but you know what else did we do? We didn't have phones. We didn't, you know. So like, you woke yeah. up in the morning and you got yeah. out of bed. You didn't grab your phone and scroll through your social media first, mm -hmm. you know. I didn't even turn, I didn't even have a TV. So in my room, so I would just get up and I would be like, okay, I got an hour and a half before I have to go to school. You know, kids now, they don't even like get dressed. They wear their pajamas. Yeah. But we always had yes. to get up and get like ready from head to toe. If, they, if yeah. we were not we, like sure. top to bottom, it, we were having a massive meltdown. And I don't know about you, but if I didn't have my Debbie Gibson electric youth perfume, Oh, oh well, I'm sorry. I was into exclamation. Oh, I had so, exclamation too. Exclamation. Exclamation. The white yeah. bottle. Okay, and Debbie Gibson Electric Youth. What was X, the yellow one? Wait, exclamation. And then hold on. 
How about what, what was, was the yellow one? The yellow um, flowery one. Sunflowers? It's not yet. <sighs> How about oh man, I can't okay. Anyway, look I remember that'll be, that'll be another podcast. Yeah, all the smells. All the smells. I for whatever reason I associate exclamation of perfume with bumware. B U M. That used to be I remember big bum. Big yeah. Big yeah. Big yeah. Wet yeah. seal. Do you oh. remember the the yeah. store with wet yeah. seal? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's yeah. We're definitely back in the nineties, which is where we were supposed to be. Anyway, <laughs> let's go back to the nineties. Eighties were so fun, but yeah. yes. Yeah. Um. I did, did did swatch watches bleed from the eighties to the nineties for sure. Oh yes, and Oakley and um Vans. Vans have been around. How about oh. Guess Jeans, right? Was get I mean, Guess Holy cow. Guess was huge in the 90s and Bongo and Esprit and Esprit. Yeah. I couldn't um, fit into Esprit. My jam was Bongo and I had every color matching something from Miller's Outpost. Miller's You're welcome. Outpost. Miller's With Outpost. Miller's Outpost perfume. Oh, Miller I, I when I could pull it off I'd get it. I'd go to Wet Seal. I, I wet seal was cool too, but I I had my he, boobs were huge, and so I had to get like guy shirts to make them cute, and then it's embarrassing. I pulled it off though. My boobs never grew; they just stayed the same. So <laughs> the nine is here's what happened in the nineties is when uh-huh. I started high school, and I switched from being like trying to be the hair valley girl guest jeans girl and i was like you know what i think i like the darker stuff and so i switched over to monkey boots doc oh. martens and band t-shirts oh they would My, oh yeah we had a name and for overalls. those what's that we would call them we would call them mod i think yep, that's that exactly. was amanda yep, yep. For sure. Yeah. For sure. That's where yeah. I went my my middle school year. Or yeah, we were, high. if that's a na- national thing or nationwide thing, or is that local? I have no idea. Huh. Um, like hip hop started to kind of control the narrative right. in mm-hmm. the 90s. Mm-hmm. And I got from hip hop a lot of my wear like hammer pants. Oh yes. <laughs> and hammer I pants. loved hammer Wait, pants. Wait, did you have hammer pants with the gold chain? No, I just black, black, black hammer Solid pants. Solid black. Okay. For those who don't know what hammer pants are, they're like these super baggy all around all around pants. Um, they look like like a genie would wear. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe I, kind of similar to joggers are now, except for the top folded over, right? Well, I would kind of relate them to like the full body suit of a like the parachute suit, right? Where okay. it doesn't have the arm wings, but the the pants oh, yeah. are wings. Yeah, it's you could. I could see where that wing when you were hammer, go hammer, MC hammer, yo hammer, <laughs> and, the and the rest, rest can go, go and, and play. I mean, that was just <laughs> there was just so much wing action going on there. I loved it. Did you girls ever learn how to do the typewriter? Um, dance? we have tried many times. I, I'll do it 100%. My family loves to make fun of me, but I don't care because I have fun doing it. Yeah, that dance was awesome. Um, for sure, she still does it in Vegas, just so you know. (laughs) She tries. Um, also, and I still do this today, I like to wear cuffed jeans, but it started in the 90s. I don't know if you guys had that on the jeans. Yeah, I'll wear some cuff jeans with like um like some flats. Yeah, I don't know. That just was really predominant in the 90s. Um, but I just kind of like to do it every once in a while still. But it doesn't look out of play. I think it just it never went away. 
Right. Depending on the uh, gene, I don't think it's ever went away. Yeah. Hmm. So this is a nationwide brand that started it in the 80s, was big in the 90s, but faded in 2000s. They were everywhere. The name of this brand was called Starter. Starter. Oh. Well, I had three NFL starter jackets. They were all Miami Dolphins. <laughs> nice. Um, yes. That brand took over the world for a little bit. They were Nike before Nike, I guess. They were everywhere. They controlled the sports market. Everybody had starter jackets and starter parkas. Oh, yeah. Yep. And what kind of started to seal the deal for starter was people getting jumped for their starter jackets. Right. Right. Yeah. And like at, at concerts or parks or walking down the street. Yeah. yeah. People started to jump for those. Mm -hmm. um, they were, they were all uh, over a hundred bucks. I'm pretty sure they were, the parkas cost like 120 or 130 or 50 or something like that. And the jackets were anywhere from 80 to 120 or something like that. If I remember right. Um, I would always like i'm a huge 49ers nerd and i could never get my hands on a niner starter jacket i tried so hard and i could never get one but i wanted one so bad that i ended up getting a bears starter jacket but what people loved it because it had it had like striped orange uh, on it and it was okay but i was a niners fan so it was you know it felt kind of out of place a little bit but i love living one. in the bay area <laughs> yeah. yeah starter is a trip because all the commercials used to be starter this starter that they had all the sports stars everybody wore it all the caps were starter and now it's just about like nike pretty much yeah yeah and the crazy thing was you could wear starter all year round where now you only wear football during, during football, football season. season. Yeah. 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 Starter was a big deal. Um, from what I remember, I think COVID sealed the deal. Uh, not COVID. Um, the strike. There was a strikes in baseball and football and stuff. And they just, they dropped off and oh. they never recovered. They never recovered. Um, Talking about starter, I mean, obviously Jordan started in the 80s, but did you ever get a pair of Jordans? No. I got a pair of Jordans about six months ago for my first time. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. Those are expensive shoes. I'm a late bloomer. Yeah. No, I mean, don't. You ever worn them? Once. I wore them once. Yeah. I mean, yeah. don't worry about that. Everybody wanted Jordans. Did you get them because of Bubba? No, I didn't. I didn't. Um, I saw them. I thought they were super. I was like, well, these are cute. And then, and Carter had just gotten some brown and white ones and they're pink and white. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get those. So cute. That's funny because they transcend time. Yeah. Yeah. You could, I mean, those original ones are crazy expensive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a coworker that collects them. And um, she buys, she, she's so crazy about it that, I mean, the actual shoes sometimes are thousands of dollars, but for like 60 to $75, she gets like the little replicas just oh, to have the, the ones or whatever. Well, they're not keychains, but they, but Me yeah, shoes. that's like kind of what it would be, but just because she's never going to pay for the full size one kind of weird yeah. but it's cool kind of a too. lot spent on a shoe i understand that the most i ever spent on a shoe was 220 or something something like that on a shoe yeah i don't know oh, what yeah that's a lot i don't know if i've spent that i i've spent that on a pair of like like way back in the day when i was a, a 
country girl, I spent it on a pair of cowboy boots. Like when, but I did, oh, my yeah. parents did yeah. when I was wor like working on the farm, it was a, and, the, and then other than that, well, worksheet, it's but yeah, you know, I was like roping them cows. Yeah. <laughs> Cowboys. I think I spent a couple hundred dollars on Doc Martens once, but yeah. Not... And the, but those the, to I me shoes them. to me shoes and purses are good investments. Yeah. And I think if it's something that you get a good ROI on, do yep. it. Yep. Every girl needs a good purse, though. That's I tell that to everybody. I think every girl needs or deserves one good purse at least. Yes. No. No matter how big or how small we get, our feet and our purses, they stay in the same size. So I love looking at good purses. investments. <laughs> What'd um, you say? I love looking at purses. I think they're cool. Yeah. Yeah. I would, you know, never like use a purse. But no, I mean, I, cool. I walk around with a, a Adidas bag everywhere I go. There you go. Everyone always asks me, dude, what do you have in the bag? I always see you with that Adidas bag. That's me. Everywhere I go, I need to have it. Um, so I'm going to give you a fad that didn't last too long. And I actually looked it up because I was wondering why this fad came in and went out so fast. People may have not even noticed it. Because they were in demand, and the demands was so high, it couldn't be met. So not many people had it. This was called hypercolor clothing. Are you aware of this? Wait, was that the stuff where it changed colors when you, <laughs> like if you, it. it went out in the sun, or if you got oh, hot yeah. or cold? Yeah. That's it. That's exactly yes. what it is. You could touch it. Yes. And it would, yes. Yes. Okay. I That's would a black. Never have that. that was a deep cut. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about this one because I would. I, I like thought about it, and I was thinking about what was a piece of clothing that I never had, but I saw, and then I remembered hypercolor. Oh, my mom. She got you some. Of course. They were, hey, my mother had to have the latest and greatest does. stuff. Like, so she would just like, look at these TL and she put her hand on it. It was so cool. I never had anything like that, Rolo. Yeah. Hey, I couldn't, Sorry. I couldn't, but I was aware of it, For of sure. its existence. Right. Um, but that was one, that was a deep cut. That was uh, a very, very quick fad though. Yeah. It turned out that. The dye that they used for it, um, it was in high demand, and because of that, and there was a sh nationwide shortage, um, so they couldn't keep up with demand for the clothing. And by the time they caught up with um, the supply, the fad had already started to fade away. Mm -hmm. So they like lost their chance to be a thing. Um, sense. here's one that you might remember from the 90s. You may not have wore it, but it was definitely from hip hop cross color jeans. Oh, yes. So one leg is one color, right? Yes, or maybe even just the top of that leg. Uh, yeah, that then, good, or like a Go pocket ahead. or something. Yeah, and then a pocket would be a different color. Yeah. Yes, cross color jeans. So actually, I thought that one of the next things you were going to bring up was backwards clothes. You know, crisscross did that. That, that Chris wrapped up crisscross. Crisscross, like, brought that out, and just for a minute, people were like, "Oh, we could do that." And then they were like, "Oh no, this is dumb." Like when you pee, you, you gotta yeah, like. There's all kinds so of weird hard. stuff, and but that, that I thought like that was around the same time. So when you, when I was talking about color blocking, like that's kind of what it's like big giant blocks of color on your clothes. Um, that's what that reminds me of. It would be the the color block jeans. And if you didn't get the, the good ones, right? You got them from like the swap meet or yes. something. Yes. When you wash them, it would come off. <laughs> yeah. 
your red go from like to pink. It's true. Yeah. It's true. It'd be they'd be pink and like lime green, even though they started like burgundy and black. I know exactly what you're talking about. Like and they were like hard too. Like because it was like they somebody painted the outside of them, so they were like they were not, not soft, comfortable jeans, right? And then you'd That's be like, Mom, I can't wear these. I just <laughs> those were forty dollars. <laughs> just bought them. You're gonna wear them. You know, that's unfortunate for people to happen to them, but yeah, I definitely saw that happen to a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, you weren't the only ones. You weren't the only ones. So how about how about bomber jackets, right? Didn't those weren't those like that's yeah. when I got my first mm-hmm. bomber jacket, right? And they were cool if they were orange on the inside. That meant they were real. I remember I my jacket. friend had a troop jacket that was a bomber jacket. I remember um, those were cool. You could sew the patches on them if you were super cool. Uh I never they had were one. I really always wanted expensive. one. Yeah, no, I, I definitely didn't have one of those. Did I want one? Yes. Could I afford? No. <laughs> you know me. what else? You know what came what happened in the early 90s that I think saved a few of us poor kids back then was um thrift shopping became super yeah. cool. Yeah. So you um, could go buy like your grandpa's old clothes and yeah. you kind of looked cool, you know? Um grunge era grunge right oh yeah flannel oh come on you could go you could get flannels from your from your dad's closet or the thrift store or whatever throw it over a band t-shirt and some jeans and man yep you're way cool yep locally right before that they didn't really call it grunge here until that name caught on but they called it house which is i don't know where that came from I thought but, house was more of a hip hop thing than like it then. was, but I don't know. Like it, it, I it, it was like it, the baggy it, over, like the cl- yeah, the big oh, baggy yeah, clothes, oversized clothes. Yeah, I painted a hat with <laughs> markers. Right one night, I was like, I'm gonna do something dope and different. So I did that. I, I got a whole bunch of markers, and I painted this one white hat. And it took all night painting it with my markers. And I displayed it the next day. People were like, what the hell? Um, but I took it off during lunchtime because it was hot. <laughs> and all the paint was on my forehead. <laughs> Your fashion faux pas. <laughs> that she was dripping. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Did you have a fashion faux pas that you remember? Oh, yeah. Um, I used to wear stretch pants a lot because I thought they were the coolest thing ever till I went to a party and I had some guy come over and to me and tell me I had a Murph. He whispered. <laughs> <gasps> no, a Murph. Tell the audience. I haven't heard that name in forever. <laughs> Okay, well, Rollo, I never heard that ever in my life. And I had just moved from Oceanside to Bakersfield. So I went to my first party ever. And then this guy comes over and tells me. And I didn't know what he was talking about. So I went to my friend and I was like, they told me I have a Murph. And she's like, oh, let's go change. And I'm like, what is a Murph? And he's like. Tell the audience. You're not cleaning your pants. (laughs) No, it's not. Yes. It was like, you're very hungry. And either your underwear or your pants are tight. And I was just all. Okay, so the, I went from stretch like, pants and somebody handed me a pair of jeans. And never, I was like, oh. <laughs> never. I, I immediately went home and never went back to school. <laughs> it was over for you. All you. <laughs> I went to a concert one time that was um, actually uh, Sublime played at it, but I they were. That. Huh? You've heard of them? I love them. I know. I yeah. love, love Sublime. I love Sublime, too. So they played here. And it was at this big, like, warehouse thing. And one of my friends talked me into wearing these pants that were, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like, the gel 
jailhouse pants from a Halloween costume. So just black and white stripe. Yeah. And I had like some funky boot, like monkey boots on and like, I don't know, probably a banch or whatever. And we go to this concert and um, I had on <laughs> neon green panties, <laughs> which why wasn't I considering the fact that my pants were black and white stripe? I don't know. But once we got inside and all the lights went off, but just the black lights were on. That was I had to leave because of how much they were making fun of me. And yeah. I was like, I didn't even want to look oh at my God. It was like, yeah. this is Halloween. But you know, Halloween costumes aren't like nah. great material. No. Like they're meant to last for four hours, not to wear, yeah. not to throw in your rotation of clothes for a concert, for <laughs> sure. They're meant to last a night, like for yeah. a little bit. Just you'd go yeah, out for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I almost got stomped on at a concert in the 90s, I remember. Um, yeah, everyone was in a mosh pit. And I was in a mosh pit. Oh. And I got stomped on pretty hard. I had to escape. Yeah, yeah. you got to learn learn how to control those if you want to be in them. Or how to be in them if you want to be in them. This girl had a had a fun concert day one time. Oh. which Ooh, story, kind of, story, I, story. I, I, guess, I guess this is a little off topic, but it was, this was our early two thousands. We went to a Cottonmouth Kings concert. Okay. It was at a racetrack, racetrack that was not being used obviously as a racetrack at the time it was being used as a concert. It was sponsored by the local strip club. So, we, so, yeah, random. So we go to this concert, just her and I, and we went in and we're standing there and we're waiting for the show to start. They have a little person stripping on stage, like what? waiting for the band to sh start that we want to see, right? And they also, like, this was like the, a festival. So people were going to sleep over in their like tents and stuff. So they had backed their trucks up to the area that we were all standing in front of the stage. And someone threw a beer can really hard, not an open beer can, by the way, a cold, not open beer, right? And just cracked her right in the back of the head. Right there. Just... Oh. And it hit her really hard and she really hard. fell on the ground. I thought I got shot. <laughs> and I and what what do you think I immediately did? <laughs> Lost my shit laughing because you I just didn't know what to do, right? It was like it hit her so hard and she went down so hard. And I'm just like, I just heard. Ooh, yeah, everybody, everybody. And in I the was crowd just all, is like, oh. did I get shot? So she thought she got shot in the back of the head. I did. Which I'm sure it felt like that. She, she, yeah, she like that looks up. Way. She's like, did I get shot? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but no, but we should leave <laughs> because oh my she, God. you you got hit really hard. <laughs> And we had to leave the show. Yeah. So, so anyway. I didn't get shot, by the way. It was just a bear can. But thrown from really far away. Yeah. And just clocked her right in the back of the head. Yeah. And then fun fact, what, 10 years later, we're hanging out with my ex-husband's best friend. And he's talking about a fun uh, party he went to one night at a festival. And he was hanging out with a bunch of friends. And they were just chucking beer cans. And they hit some chick super hard in the head, and I was all, "That was me." Oh, that's perfect. I mean, <laughs> small world, small world. <laughs> small world. I was like, "You're yeah. kidding, right?" And he's like, "No." And I was like, "Yeah, that was me." And I'm like, "Oh, well, glad you made it out okay." <laughs> <laughs> out of curiosity, what kind of beer was it? Of course, like <laughs> fucking Blue Mountain. Oh. So you got hit by a silver bullet? I got it. I got it by a silver <laughs> bullet and I survived. <laughs> oh, wow. <sighs> That's a good times right good there. Times. Um, now I can laugh about it. Back then, I got a question. For you. Make it. 
Yeah. In the 90s, which one of you wore platform shoes? Uh, we, I did for sure. I mean, like, we wore, we wore, like, pumps, but we didn't wear, like, platforms. Not pumps. <laughs> pumps? Pumps, like, wedge, like, we wedge. wore, like, like, like boot. a thick boot. Okay, but they were, okay, what did we used to call those? Penny, do you know what penny oh, loafers yeah. were? Remember yeah. penny loafers? Yeah, mm -hmm. Okay, so, in the late James. 90s, early 2000s, actually, we would wear those, but they had big, giant soles on them. Yeah. And it was well, because, which we're not there yet, I know that, but because pants in the early 2000s were just meant to be like wider than your whole body, each leg, straight down. Yeah. And we were both not very tall people. <laughs> so we had to wear shoes like that in order to wear those cool pants, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. I remember girls starting to wear platform shoes in like the mid to late 90s and it kind of popped off a little bit in 2000 with the spice girls yes right yes yeah um, we didn't we didn't long. we weren't girly enough for that i feel like no okay so here's something that started in the 90s and they still do today crop tops yeah Fun they still we went, yeah we went to pride uh last weekend with my son and he wore he rocked a, a, a crop top. <laughs> crop top. <laughs> he rocked a crop top and some white flare white flare flare jeans. jeans. Yeah. Wow. Coming back. I just remember those. So like just, we were just know, like, talking really about that. Wear. Yeah, like in the 90s, it was like, how low can you get your pants? Like, yeah, that's true. You know, and I thought kind of like. With age, we started being like, yeah, we don't, we're not into that anymore. If it came back, I definitely could never do that again. But we wore pants that like barely covered our hip bone. Like, yeah. Um, with belts. I, mean, I noticed guys would notice. For sure. Things. Yeah. Well, there's not many that wouldn't. Um, what about your hair? style which one of you sported a rachel haircut well if, uh, i mean do i still, <laughs> She's have, I still have, one? You still have a rachel haircut i still kind of have a rachel haircut <laughs> um i did for sure yeah I did. and i but i did a lot of crimping because my hair was very straight so the only thing i could do to style it was crimping you know or putting it in a side pony or I didn't really do pigtails a lot, but I did a lot of side ponies and crimping other than the whole straight up winged. Yeah, guy haircuts are boring. You know, we don't just not that much to talk about, about the girls. They definitely had the cool hair and stuff. But I think Rachel hair kind of really defined the 90s for some reason. It's just like really specific. Everyone it knows it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yep. One thing I do remember the girls it. wore. Yeah. I remember butterfly clips came in too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Big time. Okay. When was that? I just, I know it was in the 90s, but I can't quite picture it. I just remember those. It was late 90s. So we would do this thing where we would take our hair and twist it, twist it, twist it, and then kind of like do this with a butterfly clip. And then that was just so cute, right? <laughs> it was. And then they started making the butterfly clips bigger and smaller and glitter and different colored. And you kind of just did it. I just remember that they would break all the time and I would see them on the floor. For sure. Yeah, they did. All the time. Yeah, okay. That was just an observation, but it looks like all the girls knew that. Yeah. Um let me talk about some fads in the 90s. Oh, but before I do that, here's one last thing I want to say about the 90s and fashion. This was big in hip hop, but one guy, guys would wear one leg up, one pant leg up. Yes. And I think I saw a little cool J did it, mm -hmm, do yeah. it. And I was like, oh, 
Yeah, now we got to do that because that was cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, some fads. Um, did you guys have Tamagotchis? I didn't have Tamagotchis. No. Wait, were okay. those the sandals? No, no, they were little no. like things that you had to keep like. Okay, so they were like, little electronic pets. Did yeah, you have little, to keep? Oh them? no, I think we were we. I think we were too old for that. Yeah. Okay, but you weren't old enough for Big Mouth Billy Bass, were you? Oh, you too old like, the thing that was on the wall that would sing. Yeah. That... Like I feel like, did your mom have that? Of course, her mom had one. <laughs> Yeah, her mom had one. Oh, yes. Those were um, so annoying. What about Pogs? Because those were in for a little bit. Pogs? Yeah. They were like guitar picks in a way that you used to flip. No, nope, never mind. No. But they were big. They were big in the 90s in my area. Um, yeah. But I'll skip those. Um, what... Uh, brought grunge to the mainstream were Nirvana. Um, what's that one? Oh, Pearl Jam. I would watch these guys, and when these guys came out, everyone started dressing in plaid and like kind of dirty looking type gear, uh, like unwashed hair type of look. Um, guys started to wear longer hair, but I think that started in the eighties though, with the hair bands. Well, it, it did start in the eighties with the hair bands, but it, that was a different crowd. I feel like once it got to the nineties, the, the, the grunge crowd was different and it definitely came out of Seattle. Like all, you know, all those bands, like looking back on it, like it's like they came out of nowhere. Cause you know, all the bands came from LA at that time like yeah. if you were going to be big you were going to move to la and you were going to have a band there but then seattle's like we're going to do this and you and we're going to do this so when i was a freshman in high school i went to see the red hot chili peppers i thought they they hung the moon in the sky i thought that was the best music ever made shirt hates had, the red hot chili peppers by the way shirt hates the red hot chili peppers but i had previously I had only cared about three bands, and that was the Beastie Boys, Depeche Mode, and The Cure. Oh, and, love then, and then I found the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and I was like, man, I love this. So I ended up weaseling my way into some tickets, and the two opening bands were Nirvana and Pearl Jam. Never heard of, right? Never heard what? of. So we had we watched these two bands. It was another year before they blew they up. Mm -hmm. Whoa. So for a while, like I was obsessed with Nirvana and nobody else was at the time. And, you know, you couldn't just be all, hey, listen to this band. You didn't have like a device you could do that with. I yeah, just would tell them like, oh, have this band is for a so cool. Not yet. Yeah. Um, um, so they, so I feel like at that time, that was just a kind of music that was like, this is why I think grunge got so big is like any genre of person you hung out with was allowed to be a grunge music person, you know, like the jocks, they were into it. The, you know, the, the geeks, the whatever, everybody could listen to that music and it was acceptable. Did you guys have, because we had this in the 80s and it kind of still lasted in the 90s. It's not like this today, but back in the den, there was back in the day, there was a separation. There was a tribals, a tribal factions. They were the jocks, the nerds, band. Um, they were the um, people who listened to rock and the people who listened to hip hop. There was like sections of people. For sure. You know, like you know, I, why was that in our era? Why did we I have? Know, because now we, like we listen to all of it. We always have. Yeah, yeah I kind of think that mu I kind of think <clears throat> that music kind of put the pressure on that. Like uh, it was the click that, like, if you were in this click, you listen to this music. Yeah, or you were in the click because you like that music. I, I yeah, yeah, I think it went different ways, and also obviously from where you live because. 
here in in where we live right now, it's like a a big group of people that you probably don't have there. We're the country music people, you know, that we're all cowboys. Like, yeah, there was a huge group of them in my high school. I will say I when I lived in Oceanside, I was very familiar with country because of my parents, but that wasn't something that Oceanside was popular of. Yeah. But once I moved to Bakersfield, country was huge. Yeah. And I mean, we're a very, very big country town. So. But it separated people by the music you listen to. Yes. Yeah. And I think we have such, we're just bombarded with so much. We don't really have those factions anymore. Everybody just. Right. But yeah. I will tell you, it was the 90s when I'll tell you what brought my clique of the maybe the big grunge people with the hip hop people together was Rage Against the Machine. Oh, yeah. We that was one of those all uniforms. were obsessed with Rage Against the Machine. Everyone. And when I was a freshman in high school, it was yeah. like. Yeah, Rihanna, Rage Against the Machine. Um, those brought people together. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. You're right on that. Um, our, all of our friends would just listen to it and we just wouldn't care. We would, it, it, we broke the format. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. We broke it was like, format. we were all allowed to like it. You know, even though yeah. I listened to rock all my life, uh, hip hop and R and B back in the, uh, eighties and nineties for me, where they were really big, especially United nineties and R and B was my life. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, back then. Um, but I still listen to everything. Uh, grunge and fashion, though, I have to admit, I'm glad it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. I'm glad it's gone, but I, yeah. I have fond memories. I have fond yeah, memories. Yeah, like women would wear like men's giant, huge jeans that didn't fit. And we would wear like some random shirt, maybe a tank top or something, and then a huge flannel over it. Yeah. And it was like, and that was, and docs, and that was okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was just so the way we did it. The same way. I don't know if you feel the same way about this, but it kind of seems like that's when fashion stabilized in the 90s. It's kind of like it hasn't changed all that much. It's not defining, like, you know, when someone's wearing. 50s clothes and 60s clothes and 70s and 80s. But if someone wore 90s clothes today, they would kind of still fit in. Yeah. Like, you, know, yeah. you know, you know, but if they wore a butterfly collar or bell bottoms, yeah. right? You know, so uh, like, or poodle skirts, of course, we would know what era that was and they would be out yeah. of place. But I think, right the 90s kind of stabilized fashion and not to say that there hasn't been new things obviously there's new fashion every day but i think since since then it's kind of been stable yeah. you know nothing nothing too out of place that's stuck around anyways right yeah women go from high-waisted <clears throat> to low-waisted jeans or we go <sighs> from like yeah the skinny leg to the wide leg or the straight leg but all in all, you're right about that. Like you could always pull off wearing a, um, uh, what do we call it? Uh, the graphic tee and a pair mm -hmm. of jeans and a pair of flip flops for the last 30 years. You could do that. Yeah. Things have been kind of quote unquote normal. Who knows if that'll change? Well, hey, girls, it was nice looking at the past and seeing all those fun little things you used to do, especially that Aquanet conversation. I always wondered about that and <laughs> all the fun things uh, we used to wear. Uh, the only thing I told you, the one thing I never said I wore was, I don't know if you ever heard about these, but they were, well, more them in the beach kind of, they were like a little hat with the bill tipped. The bill was tipped forward um it was like a visor but yeah, it had a, yeah yeah but anyways it was nice talking about that it was and kind of clear. yeah hey hey just so you know my my new fantasy is to be able to get my hands on some aquanet and give you a 80s 
crimp it out. Yep. Oh my goodness. That we you, could crimp it. You have the length. And you have the length. Oh, we can do it. For I do have the length. I do have the length. It's uh, coming. Halloween. I do it. I do it. That sounds like fun. Well, girls, I appreciate coming on the show and talking about fashion and hair and fads and grunge and bottle cans being knocked in your head and surviving <laughs> it. And yeah. I appreciate it. And I think we're done. Thanks right. for coming awesome. on, Tracy. Thanks for coming on, Amanda. Thank you for having us. Peace, love, and ciao. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.